Get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase from today's sponsor at squarespace.com forward slash forge. Growing up, I always looked at this lamp, this angle poise lamp. I thought that this was just one of the most phenomenal bits of design imaginable. And it isn't just an icon of design for me, this is an icon of design all around the world. You can move it exactly where you need your light and you can even start some really brilliant children's films with it. It was invented in 1932 when George Cowardine, who was working on suspension mechanisms for vehicles, came up with this little mechanism. These three springs that allow you to keep this arm in just about the same spot wherever you move it. Now in those 90 years since it's been invented, there have been a whole range of styles and sizes of these lamps that have been made. What we want to do is make the largest one we possibly can. How big do we go? Well, Angle Poise already makes what they call is a giant Angle Poise lamp. And theirs, when fully extended like this, is a little under nine feet tall. Not big enough. I don't think that that at all suits the title of giant. I think that we at least want to be a little bit closer to touching the bloody ceiling to be able to call it giant. Well, that makes it convenient because if we just get the dimensions of the giant one and double it, that will be six times scale of this one that we have right here. So take all our measurements, multiply them by six, and then hope that we don't break anything because the thing it was going to probably weigh about 500 pounds. That would mean in this posture, what? That's impossible. Jamie, we can't make one that big. It's going to touch the light. We don't need that light anymore. We're going to have our own bloody light up there instead. All right, we need to order more steel. Here's what we bloody well got. Taking all the measurements off of there, we multiply them by six, means what was a 300 millimeter rod is now gonna be an 1860 millimeter rod. Now what I didn't notice is that there's actually different diameters of bar across the whole thing. We've got 10 millimeter bar and eight millimeter bar and 10 millimeter bar. We're making the thicker portions out of 50 mil box section. We're making the thinner portions out of 40 mil box section. We need two 2142 millimeter lengths at a 40 mil. Now in the steel rack, we've got a long length of 50 mil box that's gonna be good for the thick stuff, but we store the 40 mil box here in the back of the van and conveniently, it's 2142 millimeters long. Why do you keep it that specific length? It's the golden ratio, Jamie. All right, is that rolling? Yeah. Is it rolling? Rolling, 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 rolling. What? I think you mean Rolling, 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 hear them tires are turning, hoorah! I don't know if they're the words, but... No, I meant, they see me rolling, they hating, they're riding dirty. Which way are we going? Well, it's gonna go like this, isn't it? All right, slip it in between those two. And then this can be the lampshade. Oh! Jamie! <laughs> Good catch! This is what it looks like with me stood next to it. Jamie, that's insane. It looks huge. <laughs> it's big, isn't it? But let's see what it looks like with more of a bend in it. So that's probably the final pose. Yeah, but it's not particularly accurate because when you lay down, you're taller, aren't you? Wait, what? When you lie down, you're taller? Yeah. How does that work? It like stretches your body out. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> When I lay down, I'm six foot three. You'll probably be about five foot four. Or something you are down. not six foot three when you lie down, Jamie. You, you're longer when you lie down. Your body like melts out from the edges. That's not how. Look, look lie down on the ground, Jamie. <laughs> lie down, six foot three, my. Ass. <laughs> Go on, lie down. It's called a joke, you. <laughs> sir. Yep, <Yeah>, lie down. <laughs> Quick interruption because you remember, we recently restored this. Lovely mouse hole anvil, a gigantic thing. And then we decided that we were going to give it away to somebody or an organization that needs an anvil. It's gonna put it to good use. Well, today's sponsor is Squarespace. And we went ahead and built a website page. Took Jamie, what, 10 minutes to do? That included a form right here. And this form was there to take entries. Holy crap. Oh my goodness, we have a lot of entries. We have 789 form submissions. 749. What? Oh, I can't read, can I? That is insane. I thought we were just gonna have eight people. But this is the power of the Squarespace website. Because if it wasn't for this beautiful website, where we could have picked from countless themes, where we were able to drag and drop to make the design perfect, we would have never been able to get 749 submissions. Which is exactly why you should have a Squarespace website. Because 
it is an all-in-one platform. You don't have to worry about any plugins, patches, or upgrades ever. You can buy your domain in Squarespace, and you can even manage your email marketing campaigns there too. For example, if I had something to sell, I now have 749 email addresses. And I can go over to the marketing page, and we could create a brand new email campaign. Get started today with a two-week free trial at squarespace.com forward slash forge. Code forge at checkout, of course, as ever, gets you 10% off your first purchase. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring the video and helping us get a lot of people to pick from, and that's going to be our next job off camera. Let's get back to the video. So now, the engineering part of this is going to be challenging because the ratio of my strength to the friction and spring tension on this is quite appropriate for you to delicately move it about. They didn't really need to care excessively about excess friction. All they needed to do was put a little plastic washer. Between all the joints, there is a little washer. And that washer does help reduce the friction, but they're obviously not putting roller bearings in there to make it glide super easy. And the springs themselves are not overly strong. That's because this is tiny and light. It is a large, yeah. How am I, who is more engineer than engineer, going to calculate how much spring tension I need? How on earth we're going to reduce friction in the pivots. 350 pounds later. I've been on a spending spree. We've ordered a boatload of stuff, but we need to actually start making something. The answer to what we need to do first is hit it from the bottom. So here's the plan for right now. We're going to start working on this construction. It is constructed of two legs, but note they have this very adorable taper to them. But this is the box that we're making them from, and as you'll see, it's not tapered, so we need to taper it. <laughs> seems to reckon that they might have some up at the main office. What's he got there? Has he got anything? Ah! I bought more welding wire! They actually had some? Yeah, they have welding wire. Ah! 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Stand up, you boys. Are tapered. I dare say it looks quite pretty. And now that it's a new day and the delivery driver has arrived, I want to have a look at our bearing bushing setup. They're making sure that this project has the right amount of friction, not too much and not too little. Whoa, my fly's undone. Now, as you'd seen, we'd purchased these 60 millimeter bolts because they were easy to come by. And so I bought a bunch of these oil-filled bronze bushings. And what's cool about these is not only will the shaft have reduced friction inside the bore, but these things have a face on them. And my idea is to use them as follows. Right, moment of truth. We get to find out how slippery is it on a scale of one to 10. Not very slippery, but a lot better than the alternative. And, oh yes, now that's special. It is quite special that I can put load on it and it's still just as slippery. We've got those legs looking nicely tapered. We now need to do the bit that joins them all together. Need to put some steel in that spot. Right. It don't fit. It too big.
So what we have is our fork ready to be welded together. Now, because we've got holes, um, I've taken a bit of 16 millimeter threaded rod and a little bit of 22 millimeter copper bar and I've used them to make sure that our holes are nicely lined up. The spacer between our forks is 100 millimeters. We've got everything clamped together. I'm gonna tack it, weld it. We're also gonna need to make a little square plate to fit in here as well as potentially the most important part of this, a plate that goes here on the bottom with a 40 millimeter shaft that comes out of it in order for it to slip inside this bearing. say B minor? Ooh. No, actually A flat. Right, our tuning fork is going to be going on top of this piece here. So that lower piece is effectively being this protrusion. Now as you can see, this spins. This currently does not spin. And so we're gonna be using these big pillow block bearings to make it spin. When I was looking for the right type of bearing for this, I was trying to find a bearing that would not only accept these kind of rotational loads like this, but also be able to deal with this kind of like downwards force because there's gonna be this big column of weight twisting on it, all that good stuff. And in trying to learn about how these pillow block bearings work and what type of loads they can take, I found a YouTube video of this gentleman that has now uploaded a video onto YouTube to help his grandson maybe with a design component that involves pillar blocks. And it was very sweet and it taught me that for the type of loads that we're gonna be putting this on, having just one pillow block would be a bad idea. But all we need to do is sandwich two pillow blocks in opposing directions together and it would seemingly be better for this type of mechanism. So we're gonna have one pillow block on top, one pillow block on the bottom. They're gonna be sandwiched together with the bolts. All I gotta do now is turn down a little shaft that's gonna fit inside of here. So once we get that shaft sorted, we'll weld it to this plate, weld the plate to this, and we're gonna have ourselves our spinning tuning fork. Right, so I broke the hole saw before it drilled the whole way through. Now, I have to find out if I can pop this thing out. That's bigger than the hole. How's it gonna pop out? I reckon it's gonna be close. I don't think it's enough room. Yeah, it didn't fit. <laughs> God, you've made a right mess of that. What are you talking about? It's perfect. Perfection. Ha <laughs> ha, accuracy. What was that? What? <laughs> I'm like, why is my MIG welder not working? My MIG wire is feeding out of the machine instead of the gun. <laughs> That's not meant to happen. That ain't meant to happen. Slide her in. Oh no. Again? It broke it again. If it goes in there perfectly fine. <sighs> Maybe straighten this out this time. Yes, it's come through. Whoa, it's so smooth. Whoa. All righty. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's insane. This is going to not only be the largest angle poise lamp in existence, but it's also going to be the angle poise lamp with the highest max RPM and maybe slightly not concentric. But when we do six times scale, would you believe it? It looks quite a lot bigger. This is insane and I love it. If I do dare say so myself, I think this is going to be the coolest project of the week. Maybe the year, maybe the last like two or three years. This is gonna be cool, so please stay tuned because I would love to share this project with you. Big thank you as ever to today's sponsor, which was Squarespace. Links down below as ever, squarespace.com forward slash forge. See you soon, bye-bye.